different levels of friendship, you know, the Aristotle digs into. Utility. Yeah, utility, right? That there's a usefulness to the other person. Maybe you're on a sports team together. Maybe you're colleagues. Maybe that person is simply your professor or your trainer or whatever, your coach, you know? Johnny has a pool. Yeah. What? We're okay. friends with Johnny because yeah. he has a pool. That's called utility. I don't know about Johnny. I don't like him. It's true. You like the pool. I like yeah. the pool. He's got yeah. a pool. I want a pool. So utility. Trampoline friend. And, and it's not necessarily bad, right? In no. fact, it's often the starting place for a lot of sure, relationships. Of There's a usefulness, you know. But then there's pleasure, which is a little bit of a higher form of friendship, right? You know, it's this enjoyment of the other person. In a sense, like for, I guess, what they bring to you. You yeah. know, it's, it's a little bit selfish still. But, you know, it's certainly more than just they're useful to you. You, you kind of delight in them, but it's not quite delight yet. It's on the way to delight. Yeah. And I then, delight in what they do or yeah, what they bring yeah. kind of offer me in a physical way. Exactly. Kind of exactly. Way. But then it's a whole nother thing to have this friendship of excellence, friendship of virtue. Virtue. Where you delight in the person for their own sake, where you begin to will the good of the other. As and, other. Yeah, that's right. Even if that good does not include you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that takes a lot of selflessness or detachment. Yeah. Which brings me to a whole other point that I find very challenging, detachment. You know, like how do you love generously, passionately, heroically, and yet without expectation, without counting the costs, without expecting anything in return? That is so hard. And yet it is also so joyful when you when you find that sweet spot in particular relationships and maybe it's just me but i'm constantly navigating that i'm constantly making mistakes in that arena i'm constantly trying to grow in every relationship there's a new dynamic that is constantly unfolding where it demands more love and and less expectation you know what i mean i i can't i can't ever get comfortable with it otherwise something falls apart yeah and it's usually the the relationship i remember a couple months ago we talked about the concept of like teleology. Yeah. I don't know if we actually ended up using the that. The end but or the... It's the end of it. Yeah. It's yeah. the thing toward which... It, it's constantly this motion, right? Where this movement toward the fulfillment of the thing. And I think that in friendship, there's kind of this natural progression. Oh, hey, you know, I'm Jimmy. Oh, I'm Ryan. You know, I'll, oh, hello. Oh, this, that, the other thing. Oh, coffee. Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this music, this holiday, this thing or whatever. And then there's going to come a time when the next logical thing to say will be that part of you, that thing about your life or whatever that you don't want to say. Yeah. Because it means being vulnerable, because it means taking that risk of friendship and of moving out of first usefulness, then pleasure, and Mm -hmm. moving into a place of true, I love you, I'm choosing you, I'm relying on you, I'm investing in you. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere, and I perceive that, and I'm going to make the leap now. Yeah. And if you do that, which seems to be the natural progression for somebody who's earned the right to hear your story, as Brene Brown would say, and somebody who can bear the weight of your story, those mm-hmm. are the two great kind of pillars of vulnerability, according to mm-hmm. Brene Brown, but um, you make that leap or you don't. Yeah. But look at what happens when you don't. Look at what happens when you kind of dam that river of motion that you kind of put a stop to that natural progression of increased vulnerability, of increased investment, what happens? Well, Mm. suddenly the excellence dissolves and then it just becomes, then we, well, yeah, I just like hanging out with you. It's so much fun, you know, whatever. And then, okay, you know, hey, I'll see you at work, whatever. Like, well, you know, let's get lunch at work every now and then. Hey, Ryan, you still talking to Jimmy? I mean, yeah, we kind of see each other every few weeks. You know, he still works there or whatever, but... Because I chose not to to move towards the natural conclusion of our relationship, it's going to dissolve and fall apart, you know? Yeah. Again, the Narnia thing. Yeah. Come further up. Come further in. So the good things are always beckoning us. Come mm. further into me, they say. Come further up toward me, they say. And you either say, okay, I'm going to do it, or mm. you say, no thanks. Yeah. You know, no thanks. 